in yesterday's class uh, we had seen two kinds of uh, solid propellants that are used namely homogeneous and heterogeneous propellants. Uh, in this class let us look at uh, how these burn and uh, what is a function how what does burn rate depend on and uh, how can you vary the thrust of a solid rocket motor. Uh, if you remember uh, yesterday's class uh, the uh, figure that I had shown of a solid rocket motor it was very very simple there are no moving parts and it is a self pressurized system right. Uh, but sometimes uh, the simplest things are very difficult to design because there is no control for you and if something does not uh, work the way you want it to work there is nothing that you can do to bring it back to the uh, way you want it to work. So, uh, designing a solid rocket motor although it is very simple looking is at times very very difficult. Okay. Now, if you remember our thrust equation we had written m dot isp right. Now, let us say I pick a propellant combination then this isp is fixed right. So, if I want to change the thrust in some sense the only way I can do it is by playing around with m dot ok. So, I can write this as f is equal to we also know that m dot the mass flow rate is equal to uh, you are aware of uh, uh, the expression for mass flow rate in a fluid it is rho a v very similar here it is rho p r dot into a b where rho p is the density of the propellant r dot is called as the burn rate and a b is the burning surface area. Uh, the burn rate is uh, something that you measure along the local normal that is burn rate along the let us say you have a propellant like this, this is the local normal to this surface and burn rate is measured along that ok. So, this is r dot and a b is the burning surface area. Now, I can rewrite my thrust equation as As I said earlier if I want to modulate the thrust if I pick a propellant composition then ISP is fixed and density is fixed. The only parameters that are under the controller control of the designer are a b and r dot ok. So, in this class let us look at how these vary and uh, how can we modulate the thrust. Now, the burning surface area uh, if you look at uh, the various possibilities that you can have it is shown here uh, in this figure wherein it gives you a uh, lot of options for a burning surface area. Now, the uh, shaded portion is the one uh, which is the propellant grain and it can burn for example, in this along this surfaces ok. This is known as a star grain uh, wherein it burns from inside to out. So, there are various ways in which you can change the burning surface area right. Uh, 
Now, different types of port configuration is possible leading to changes in burning surface area. Now, if you pick uh, something known as a cigarette or a end burning grain. The burning surface area looks like this. This is the burning surface. Uh, this is the burning surface area, and it burns normal to that. So the burning surface doesn't area doesn't change with time. What it will do is, if you look at the pressure time or the thrust time for this, it will remain a constant. This kind of burning surface area is known as uh, neutral burning surface area. That is as the propellant burns uh, the burning surface area does not increase. Okay. Uh, there are many other ways in which one can get a neutral burning surface. Uh, for example, uh, in this star configuration one can also get a neutral burning surface and also here okay it need not always be cigarette burning and if you look at this uh, uh, rod and lever arrangement uh, the propellant is burning from outside to inside in this portion and it is burning from inside to outside in the other one so the increase on one side is matched by the decrease on the other side and therefore you will again get a neutral burning yes Yes. With respect to time. Yes. Uh, whereas your burn surface area remains a constant. Yes. So uh, in that case, uh, shouldn't the pressure be dropping? Uh, hold on to this question. I'll answer it a little later in the uh, probably in the next class. Uh, very simply, if you uh, to answer your question, uh, what you are replacing is, if you look at uh, this propellant. Propellant has a very high density something of the order of uh, 1500 to 1800 kg per meter cube. You are replacing it with a gas of a very low density. So therefore, uh, if you look at it uh, because of this the pressure does not drop too much. We will be able to show that uh, in equations a little later. Okay. Now, uh, in addition to neutral burning we also have something known as progressive burning. Progressive burning is one in which the burning surface area increases with time. So, uh, a propellant configuration of the kind something like a tubular grain wherein it is burning from inside to outside. when it is burning from inside to outside the burning surface area keeps on increasing with time and you will get something known as progressive burning and if you look at the thrust time curve for this it will look like this. 
uh, you can also have uh, on the other end a regressive burning gain that is the burning surface area decreases with time. And uh, a good example of that would be something wherein a grain is freestanding and it is burning from the outside to the inside. Then the burning surface area shrinks with time and the th corresponding thrust time curve will be. something like this ok. Uh, if you look at this figure here the star grain you can configure it uh, to be a progressive burning, regressive burning and uh, uh, neutral burning uh, surface area configurations also, but some of them uh, beyond a certain point will always be progressive ok. We will discuss that a little later in the course. Now if you look at all these uh, configurations, if you look at the propellant loading that is possible, this will have the highest propellant loading right because uh, you are utilizing the entire volume to fill the propellant. Uh, but in any other case uh, if you look at it the burning if you want the burning surface area to be large then uh, uh, burn rate will be a little lower ok and uh, the loading will also be lower. Uh, if you come back here to this equation you will find that if you want to get the required thrust and if a b is limited as in the case of neutral burning then you have to have a very high r dot in order to achieve the required thrust ok. Although propellant loading is higher there the burn rate requirements are very very high ok. Therefore uh, these kind of configurations are seldom used. Now as I said earlier that the thrust depends on uh, burning surface area and R dot for a given composition right. Now let us look at uh, we have looked at how burning surface area can be varied in order to get the required thrust. Let us look at the parameters on which the burn rate depends on ok. If you look at the burn rate, burn rate depends on is a function of chamber pressure, the initial temperature, the cross flow velocity and uh, <coughs> the composition. Uh, for a given composition it depends on only these three parameters ok. the 
the change in burn rate that corresponds to this lateral velocity is something known as erosive burning. We will discuss that a little later in the course. So, uh, for the time being, we will look at how these two parameters affect the burn rate, namely the chamber pressure and the initial temperature. Uh, there is one difference between a composite propellant and a uh, double base propellant. Uh, if you look at a double base propellant for a given composition, you can change the burn rate by a small margin if you add burn rate modifiers. That is the only way it can be changed, okay. assuming that the burn rate modifiers are added in very small quantities. But whereas, if you look at a composite propellant, you can get uh, with the same composition depending on the particle size, you can get different kinds of burn rates, okay. uh, which is why these propellants are also known as tailor made propellants. We will discuss that a little later. So, if you uh, for a given composition depending on the particle size, you can get different burn rates in a composite propellant, but whereas in a double base propellant you cannot. Okay. Now, let us look at how these two parameters affect the burn rate. To do this, well, what people use is something known as a Crawford bomb, which is uh, shown in this figure here. This is nothing but a pressure vessel, wherein you can uh, take it to very high pressures. The pressure inside this chamber can be artificially changed. Uh, by connecting it to a nitrogen cylinder and a uh, inlet valve. So, you can set the pressure at which you want to do the experiment. Why nitrogen? Primarily because nitrogen is an inert gas and uh, we would want to study the burn rate uh, of the propellant in an inert atmosphere. Because if you look at a rocket motor, uh, the combustion gases are there, there is no oxidizer. If you do it in air, then you will have to account for air also being a good oxidizer. So, which is why nitrogen is uh, preferred. So, using this uh, nitrogen cylinder you can set the pressure uh, in the combustion chamber. Now, if you have a small propellant strand as shown here okay, and if you have uh, nichrome wires running through them and if you know the distance between these two wires you can have a simple uh, electric circuitry wherein uh, once the propellant starts burning from this side along this direction once it cuts the first wire the timer will or the stopwatch will start and once it cuts the second wire the stopwatch will stop so you know the time taken between the cutting of the two wires okay and you know the length at which or the distance between them, then you can calculate the burn rate as an average value okay. and uh, that is what is done. If you repeat this experiment at different pressures and different initial temperatures, you will get the required variation. And these can be plotted on a log log plot. and it is seen that with increase in initial temperature uh, the burn rate varies like this. This is for as given initial temperature that is T n 1. So, the 
initial temperature 3 is greater than initial temperature 2 which is greater than initial temperature 1. So, the burn rates are seen to increase with increase in initial temperature and they are also seen to increase with increase in pressure. Now, why on a log log plot? Simply because if you have uh, a variation that is following a power law, then when you plot it on a log log scale, what you will get is a straight line. Okay. So, that is why these are plotted on a log log plot and uh, we can get the expression for burn rate as follows. R dot is given by A P C to the power of n, uh, where P C is the chamber pressure. And n is the pressure index. And A is burn rate at unit pressure. That is if you look at this graph when P c is equal to 1, what is the burn rate that you will get? As I said if you plot on a log log plot anything that follows a power law it will be straight line. So, if you take log of that you will get log r dot is equal to log a plus n log p c. So, n is the slope and a is the burn rate at unit pressure. So, the slope of this will be n and it is intercept on the uh, y axis will be the unit burn rate. Okay. Now, uh, this A has uh, embedded in it the initial temperature variation part also. If you look at this equation, we had said that it varies both on chamber pressure and initial temperature. Chamber pressure is very obvious there. The initial temperature part is embedded in the A, we will see how it is. A is given as A naught into exponential of sigma into Sigma is known as the initial temperature sensitivity and uh, T i n naught is some reference initial temperature. and A naught is the value of A at that reference uh, initial temperature. Okay. And uh, if you uh, work this out you can get the expression for sigma uh, and N 
n will be very simple n is nothing but uh, logarithmic derivative of uh, burn rate with respect to pressure will give us n okay and uh, sigma is logarithmic derivative of burn rate with respect to initial temperature okay this uh, we can simplify it further n I can uh, write it as uh, log R2 minus ok. So, that will give you the slope. So, that is if you know the burn rate at two different pressures, you can calculate the slope in this fashion. It is nothing but discretization of that equation that we have written there and similarly, sigma I can rewrite it as 1 by r dot into dr dot by t i n that is we are taking the logarithmic derivative here and taking the r dot out ok. Uh, and similarly, if you discretize this you will get this if you look at it is a non dimensional quantity whereas, this will have a 1 by Kelvin unit ok. The unit of this is 1 by Kelvin and because it is usually very small it is usually expressed as a percentage ok. So, you will have it as percentage 1 by Kelvin. Let us look at uh, the values of uh, density, typical uh, burn rates that are possible and uh, the pressure indices and uh, temperature sensitivity for the two propellants homogeneous and heterogeneous. If you look at homogeneous propellant, typically the density will be of the order of 1600 kg per meter cube, then N varies between 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. It is very high primarily because we have mixed the fuel and oxidizer at a molecular level and therefore, uh, its combustion will be something like a premixed flame and which is the reason why we get a higher end. We will see how to get to this a little later in the course and uh, the sigma values around 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 uh, 
uh, Kelvin inverse. And similarly for heterogeneous propellants, the density is around 1700 to 1800 kg per meter cube depending on the composition. Uh, if you have a highly aluminized propellant it goes towards this end. Then the index here uh, if you remember the ingredients are mixed in a mechanical fashion and therefore uh, you will not uh, go into this uh, the combustion of this will be more diffusion dominated and therefore you will find the burn rate pressure index uh, lower in this case something like 0 0.3 to 0.4 and the initial temperature sensitivity will be of the order of 0.4 uh, please remember it is a percentage which means the actual value will be 0 0.0025 uh, Kelvin inverse. Okay. Now, what do these quantities mean to us in terms of uh, how do they affect the thrust of the rocket motor? We will see that next. Firstly, let us take the initial temperature sensitivity, right. Uh, why is initial temperature uh, sensitivity very important? Uh, it will not be so important for a launch vehicle industry, primarily because you can choose the time and place of the launch. That is, the place will be usually fixed, okay. In India's case, uh, we launch it from Srihari Kota. So, the place is fixed and you can choose the time such that the temperature is within a certain bounds. Okay. But whereas, uh, for any military application depending on the temperature variation, uh, temperature will vary both day and night and also from place to place. So, uh, usually any uh, missile will have to take into account minus 50 to plus 70, okay. temperature variation of minus 50 to plus 70. Now, what does this, how does this affect what we are talking about? If you recall the burn rates were higher at a higher initial temperature and lower at a lower initial temperature. So, if burn rates the motor is going to be the same irrespective of which place you launch it from, right. And if you are launching from different places which are at different temperatures then the thrust of the rocket motor will also be very different. If you look at the thrust equation F we had written as right. Now, this R dot will vary depending on the initial temperature and if this varies the thrust will also vary, but because we have loaded the same amount of propellant the overall impulse is the same. Okay. So, therefore, uh, what can one say will the mission be severely hampered or uh, will it not be hampered because we are saying the overall impulse is the same right. Only the thrust uh, time curve changes the overall impulse will be the same. How does this affect the mission? So, what will happen? Uh, yes, uh, if you look at it the burn rate will change if the thrust uh, if the time for which the thrusting is there is altered then the drag characteristics will be very different. As long as the uh, rocket motor is thrusting the drag will be a lot less, uh, 
but as soon as you switch it off the drag will increase. So, if your burn time changes your drag will change and the missile will not hit the intended target which is why uh, the variation with initial temperature is of very uh, great significance to military applications and not so much for uh, the launch vehicle industry. The typical thrust time curves or the pressure time curves with different initial temperature will be something like this. So, you notice that uh, the burn times are very different for the 3 cases and therefore, as I said the drag profile will also change which means that the mission may not be fulfilled. We need to keep that in mind because the range of the missile is determined by this. Okay. So, uh, what one would want in terms of uh, initial temperature sensitivity is as low a parameter as possible. If it is as low then these dispersions will be smaller, okay. these changes in burn time will be smaller and therefore, you are within a small variation. Right? Now, let us look at how the other parameter namely n or the pressure index affects performance. The first thing that we are going to look at is what is the value of n that should be there should if a value greater than 1 is good or if a value smaller than 1 is good and then how small do we want this value or how large do we want this value. Okay. Now, if you draw the pressure versus uh, mass flow rate curve, but before we go there If you look at a rocket motor, okay. if I take this control volume up to the throat. Okay. Now, uh, the mass is being added because of the burning of the propellant okay. and the mass is thrown out through the throat. Right. So, I know that uh, for steady operation the mass that is coming in must be equal to the mass that is being thrown out. So, I will call m dot in as the mass that is coming in, m dot in we know is dependent on the burning of the propellant. So, it is given by r dot and uh, m dot out is uh, it if it is a choke flow then 
this can be written as P C A T by C star all right. Now, here in this equation I can rewrite the burn rate as A P C to the power of n. There is one assumption that we are making. If you look at this term pressure, what we had got here was based on the experiments done in a Crawford bomb or a window bomb. Okay, so this is a static pressure, right? And if you look at this, this is a stagnation quantity. Uh, the assumption that we are making is that the static and stagnation pressures are nearly the same. So, you need to bear that in mind uh, that this is stagnation and this is static and can be different. Okay. So, now for uh, equilibrium or for steady state conditions the mass coming in must be equal to the mass that is going out. So, we will get m dot in must be equal to m dot out which means you can rewrite this expression and get an expression for P C alone. So, if we equate the two and uh, try to obtain an expression for P C, we will get P C is equal to okay. this P C is also known as uh, P C equilibrium okay. that is once it reaches uh, this then there will be steady flow. Okay. Now, uh, let us look at what value of P C uh, what value of n uh, will lead to stable operation of the motor and what values do not lead to stable motor, uh, motor operations. If you plot the mass flow rate m dot and uh, p c here I am uh, plotting both m dot in and m dot out. Okay. m dot out is a linear function remember it is nothing but p c a t by c star. So, it is something like this. Now, there are two possibilities that we can look at uh, for uh, m dot in, m dot in is nothing but uh, when n is greater than 1 and when n is less than 1, for n greater than 1 if you say something like this, then at this point the mass flow rate that is coming in is equal to the mass flow rate that is going out okay. and this would be the equilibrium pressure. Now, let us say for some reason or due to some disturbance uh, the pressure changes if it goes in this direction. Right, what happens then this is m dot in and this is 
m dot out okay if you look at this the m dot in is much greater than m dot out in this region and therefore the pressure will tend to keep on increasing and this could lead to an explosion okay whereas if you come on this side if you if there is a disturbance in this direction then the mass flow rate that is coming in is lower than the mass flow rate that is going out and it could finally lead to quenching so uh, for n greater than 1 the motor operation is unstable and is not preferred okay let us look at the case where n is less than 1 Uh, this is the m dot n for n lower than 1 if you look at this this is the stable uh, or the equilibrium pressure for n less than 1 if let us say the pressure is changed from this point in this direction uh, m dot out is greater than m dot n so which means the pressure will tend to fall uh, and come back to the same value okay and if it goes in the other direction uh, m dot in is greater than m dot out so it will tend to increase the pressure and take it back to the same value so this uh, equilibrium point is a stable equilibrium and uh, n less than 1 is preferred for rocket motor operations so we would want the value to be lower than 1 but how much lower than 1 or how much uh, are we going to have is what we need to look at uh, if you look at this equation here you see that uh, n appears in the denominator okay let us say we have a low value of 0.2 or something right what will uh, this be 1 by 0.8 right 1 by 0.8 is 1.25 so any changes to either the burning surface area or the throat during the operation of the motor the pressure is only going to go up by a one a power of 1.25 so it would be good if you can have a lower value let us look at the other extreme that is let it be less than 1 uh, let us say we take a uh, n of 0.8 uh, then if you have 1 minus 0.8 that will be 5 so the pressure for any changes here will increase uh, by the power of 5 which is not a desirable thing so it is important to have less than 1 for stable operations and uh, as low as possible so that uh, changes in uh, burning surface area or throat will not affect the chamber pressure much okay there are also uh, propellants that are known to have a burn rate pressure index of 0 okay these are known as uh, plateau burning propellants and uh, 
there are propellants with uh, n being negative these are known as mesoburn if you have n equal to 0 then any change in pressure uh, or any change to any of these uh, parameters will not affect the pressure at all okay if n goes to 0 then changes here will not affect pc okay and that is preferred we'll stop here we'll continue in the next class thank you